Just talk, okay? Oh, um, good afternoon. Ah, what's that, brother? Hotep. Assalamu alaikum. Shalom. What bees happening? What bees? <laughs> <laughs> uh, just a slight correction. Uh, I came from. I come from uh, South Carolina. My ancestors were sold out of Charleston, South Carolina, to Virginia. So my mother and father and grandmother and all of that side of my family is from Virginia. But we were originally uh, in South Carolina when we landed here on this northern part of the uh, European white suppression. Uh, we're going to talk about some things here, mostly centered around a health focus and how we use other modalities in the health field to achieve a state of wellness. We are dealing with a science. A science is a language of a people. It's a political and social language of a people. All sciences are a political and social language of a people. Mathematics, medicine, all of those are political and social languages of a people. Without a culture, you have no way to define what a science is because it's based on your culture. It serves the needs of the culture. Just as sex is a political and social language of a people, it serves the needs of the people. Japanese, Chinese have sex different from the Europeans. But we're all taught to behave like them, so we think that there's only one form of sexuality, and that's the Europeans. But that is a political and social language that enhances their culture. So we have to be clear on that. 
we have to be clear that we're talking about a military science. I'm not talking about a social science. Maybe that's one of our problems. We keep using a social science with a military group of people known as the Europeans. They use military science. Their whole approach to nutrition, food, and African people is military. The most military person in the African culture is the black woman. That's the one that the white man got to first with his military intelligence. So we have a military approach to things that we are not uh, associating with military, so a lot of things are gonna kind of get crossed up here. Well, you brothers, what I'm talking about is why ladies select their shoes and dresses the way they do and it takes them so long. It's a tactical way in which they approach it. It's an objective to it. That's why it takes a while. What you think is just them selecting a dress or a pair of shoes is a purpose for it. It's a plan behind it, whether they're going to dress to enhance their dress, dress to enhance their legs, dress to make another sister jealous. It's a tactic. It's a way you approach things. <laughs> That's military. That's what I'm trying to get you to see, that we're already in a military mode. It has to serve a purpose. What we do is a political and social activity, and it has to serve a purpose, and that purpose is ma'at. Everything we do is directed toward ma'at. So we have to redefine a lot of things, and it takes time to get rid of this European education, which we all have. We've all been bitten by white supremacy, and in some way, we're dysfunctional. When you're not free to practice your culture in all times, in all situations, you're dysfunctional. And we're all dysfunctional to a degree here, so there's no need of pointing at another person saying they're dysfunctional when you're dysfunctional yourself. I'm not going to get into some dialogue about what is a hybrid and what is a clone food, because African people, you are hybrids. And you're a clone. That's what they call breeding slaves. So let's not even go on that trip about what is a hybrid and what is clone and what is all. We're all hybrids. We've been hybridized by the Europeans to make a better slave. So we have to throw away some things here. We're going into an area of science that's dealing with energy. Energy is movement. And what I had to do is I had to go back and get this energy from where it was stolen from, from the Buddhists, from the uh, Hindus, who don't like black people, by the way. That's Deepak, or whatever this book y'all buy by that guy who hates black people, Deepak. He's a Brahmin. He does not like black people. So I had to go back and get it from the Japanese, the Buddhists, the Hindus, the so-called tribe called the Jews, which is nothing but Europeans by another name, and the Greeks and the Romans. They, they got the information because we taught everyone. We taught everyone on this planet how to be civilized. Even the things that we uh, think are, are Native Americans are not actually Native American, it's African coming back at you. The feather of Ma'at, truth, justice, and reciprocity. That's why the chief wears the feathers on his head. That's African. All documentation says that. So I had to go to a, lo a lot of different thieves to get the information back again. Primarily, what we're dealing with is energy. We're dealing with energy as we call it, she fat. Energy is generally classified based on what we call in African science the male and female principle. The male principle being science and the female principle being art. You cannot have art without science. If you play the piano, you enter mathematics. You cannot have art without science. You cannot have science without art the male and female principle. It takes two to tango, as the old folks would say. So under the male principle, we have Osiris, we have the colors orange, we have hot, we have energy that spins to the right, we have serotonin, we have adrenaline, we have carbon, we have day, we have electricity. Male is electrical, female is magnetic. It's just the way we classify energy. We have colors that are male and colors that are female. I'll show you that. And under the female energy principle, we have Isis, 
Some of you may be familiar with that. We have melatonin, we have the growth hormone, we have sleep, we have oxygen, we have alkaline, we have night. This comes under the female principle. And Brother Keedy, it's a blessing. And all this information I give to Keedy, because he gives to me. As Khalid gives to me, I give back. That's all I'm doing is just giving it back. And I don't know why you're rushing to write it down, Keedy, because you can have this transparency. <laughs> you know, I give it to you, no problem. Now I'm going back and show you the Ankh. We are wearing what is known as a cosmetic Ankh. I have a medical ankh that we use in our science. I don't use it around certified Negroes because they get a little upset and all. But this is a medical ankh. This is what we use. We use this, which what people call a chicken leg, chicken wing. Your, your grandparents couldn't get a hold of this instrument, so they used the breastbone of a chicken. Oh, yeah, they were quite African. And this is a medical ankh. You know where I bought it from? Some white boys who stole it from us. And you use this and it jumps to the, the vibration that's out of order. So you can go along the torso of a person, if something wrong with the liver, it's gonna jump there. You see? Now, we have a symbolism here. This is a flash point. This is where energy comes in at. This is an Ankh detector which we call a modern divining rod. This energy comes in where the male and female principle unite, which you would call sexual intercourse, where it unites that right here. This is where we have a flash point where the energy merges. I don't want anyone to get confused. I'm talking about sexual enter the course. The only thing that can enter the course is a penis. Only a man and a woman can have sexual intercourse. I know I'm in Atlanta. <laughs> a male and a male can masturbate each other, but they cannot have entered the course. A female and a female can masturbate each other, but they cannot have entered the course. That's in African science. Now, Europeans, they can have sex with monkeys and all that stuff, but that's a different story altogether, and I'm, I am going to go there. <laughs> Again, I'm showing you how this instrument was put together, this, this orientation of polarity. We use these terms because I, I was educated in a European school, and I don't want you all to get confused because I'm very confused at times myself because sometimes this white man in my head says something and I have to put him in check. You know what I mean? But polarity just means north and south, male and female. If something is polarized, it has a male and female. It's just another way of saying it. Now, I'm going to show you uh, how the energy breaks down. Here's a holistic chart here. This is where we get this word or, or term called holistic science from. Now, all science comes from the human body. Mathematics comes from the study of the human body. Geometry is the study of how the shapes and angles in your body get together and merge and form another type of energy. Calculus is how you calculate the energy frequency of your body. All sciences come from the human body. All machines come from the human body. The car motor duplicates your digestive system. A nuclear reactor duplicates your liver. It changes the energy around. How does a car work? You put the gas in the tank, but the car cannot use the gas in the tank. It cannot run on that. It has to change it into something. It changes it into a vapor form, and some spark plugs fire it off. You eat your food, you change the food into liquid. The liquid gets heated up to 98.6 and gets changed into a vapor, and it gets sucked in some tubes called a villa that's in your intestines, which are little straws, and then the enzyme fires it off. The car mode is the direct duplication of you. All you have to do is know thyself. 
the camera comes from your eye, the speaker comes from your ear, the antenna duplicates your hair, every instrument that you can name comes from the human body. This is God's top performance here. So don't think you can get lost. When you study in African science, it's going to make you more connected to nature, more connected to yourself, and more connected to God. If it doesn't do that, then you are not studying African science. You're studying the political and social language of the Europeans. Science should make you more spiritual. It's the whole purpose of science. All the organs and muscles in your body are named after God. Cephal. You say bicep, tricep. That's cephal. That's the head God. That's the God that's trying to make rhomboid unite with deltoid. The, all the muscles in your body are named after spirits and God. If you study the muscles, it's, you're studying a spiritual system. Even if you study the bones, you're studying a spiritual system. It's just that the Europeans don't want you to make that connection. Hippocrates kind of broke that up. He said, no, let's call this science and keep God out of it, because it's bad news. Now, we have colors. Each bone in your body creates a color when it's struck and vibrates. It creates a musical note, and it creates a color, and it creates a sound, which you may call a letter. Now, I'm talking about the bones. Even your back bones vibrate to a different note. That's the same thing that happened in the pyramids of Giza. Each one of those stones, they are not bricks, vibrates to a musical note. Even the obelisk, which you call the Washington Monument, if you strike it, it vibrates to a musical note. It is a functional thing. All African science and art is functional. So we have these 32 backbones. We have 12 melanin centers on our brain stem. You have 12 zodiac signs. All of those relate to the 12 melanin centers on your brain stem, which the Europeans call melanin reticulum formations, better known as just melanin. You have 12 melanin centers, the Europeans have two. You have 360 melanin clusters or chakras, as the Indian people like to call in your digestive tract, the Europeans have 40. So we have color here, indigo, violet, and blue. We commonly call those female colors. And in nature, you can see that the male has these bright colors to distract a, a predator from the female and the child. So the male usually has the bright colors. The, the canaries and all those male birds will have yellow, orange, and red. So we call those male colors. Remember, I said that science is a political and social language of a people. Now, I have red here, but I want to make red into pink, so I add white to red. So once I add the white to the red and make pink, should I put the pink clothes on the girl or the pink clothes on the boy? I'm not trying to say men should go around wearing pink underwear or going to a Dennis Rodman type thing. I'm trying to say that red is a male color and female color is not red. Pink is not a female color, it's a male color. Our whole orientation toward colors is political and social based on another culture, which makes us an alien to ourselves. So we gotta go back and recapture a lot of this. Now each organ and each what you call organs in your body, vibrates to a note. Your intestines, your liver, and pancreas vibrates to the musical note C and makes the color violet. And it's related to the sixth house on this, of the zodiac, or the sixth melanin reticulum formation center on your brainstem. That's how scientific we are. So we use instruments that help vibrate and make harmony with these centers in our body so we can attain a state of wellness. The um, zodiac is kind of like a, 
people just don't understand it's kind of like something you do to find out who you should go out with or whether you should play the lottery today but it's a little more involved than just that it's been kind of abused by the public uh, newspapers but it's uh, ancient african science and all of us older guys in the medical and sisters in medicine know how to do medical astrology as part of the kit and caboodle that we use so i do medical astrology as well so we have these centers that are related to colors and related to zodiac houses, which all spells energy. That's why we can use these instruments like this, this tuning fork, to vibrate certain centers on your brain stem and to help facilitate energizing your pineal gland or to detect when there's something wrong inside of your pancreas or liver. All the instruments. I normally uh, don't use these instruments, as I mentioned before, around groups of people. They're not open to it. Because I don't want to scare people. And we are scared of Africa. So we're talking with the Europeans called psychic healing. As you can see, the unk there is held, and it's held, and it's it vibrates on this divining rod here. There are instruments that duplicate this called a sistrum that you may have seen the country and western people play. Ding, 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 ding. That instrument, that's a sistrum that duplicates this unk, a healing quality of the unk. Everybody's using our stuff but us. Now you can go back to the uh, ancient drawings and the pyramids, and you'll see these centers that I referred to right here. And you see the, where this animal is biting in the center, the meeting point, that's where green is. And you see the male and female colors, and you see the symbolism over and over again. And it has name, Ikmer, Shechem, and all the comedic names to it. But this is the functionality of the symbols. It has more than just a sound quality to it. It had a medical quality to it. Now, all energy spins. You know when you flush the toilet, it, the water spins around, if you're having a healthy bowel movement. Otherwise, you probably clog it up. But you'll notice that the energy just spins around. So we know that energy spins. It spins to the right or spins to the left. And it spins through these houses, as we call it, of uh, Aquarius, Scorpio, Capricorn. It spins through these houses. And each time it transverses one of these houses, the energy force field changes. I'm going to show you this male and female principle. One end of this wave, the spin is male, and the other end is female. And then we have that meeting point where you saw the dog biting, which would be the color green right there again. This is the old model that they teach you in school of how waves move, but it mo moves like this in spinning forms. Everything is constantly spinning. The planet spins. You spin. And what keeps you from feeling dizzy is something that hovers over your third eye, over your pineal gland, called your third eye, keeps you centered. And here we have a functional drawing of that spin and the merger once again right there. And then we see with the wings of Isis again, the same duplication of this ancient principle. It's just that things are so, we're so much an ancient people that we get, kind of get lost. Our, our villages were laid out in what we call fractional geometry. In African science, you just don't, if you study math, it's going to be a little calculus mixed in there, a little geometry and trigonometry is going to be all mixed in there because you study all of them at the same time, where the Europeans are going to go from math to geometry to trigonometry, but it's usually all mixed in at the same time when you're studying African science. It makes it rather confusing for some people. Now, all instruments, as I mentioned before, especially when you come into the hair, you'll notice that leaves and ferns and your hair 
all are shaped like these antennas here. This is where the antennas come from. You get the FM aerials, the same thing that happened with a twig or beech leaf. They have what we call a logarithmic aerial shape. It's over and over again. All sciences should help you be more connected to nature. You don't have to know biology terms to understand health. You can know color. You can know music. Because anything you understand is, has a healing ability to it. It's not restricted to someone who just knows biology. So don't get duped with the terms. Anything that I understand, you should be able to understand. And don't get lost in the terms. Just say, hey, break it down. I don't understand what you're saying there. Because a lot of things that we learn, are just, we learn them just to keep us confused. One point of confusion is this. We learn that we have organs in our body, and everybody says, we have organs in our body. Oh, that's true, you have organs in your body. And you have glands in your body. And that's true, you have glands in your body. Well, what's the difference between an organ and a gland? You have a sweat gland, right? The sweat gland does not make water. It just secretes water. The water is already made, and it secretes it out. You call that sweating. So we know a sweat gland, a gland period, secretes something, but it doesn't make the something that it secretes. You follow me? If it makes something, it's an organ. If it secretes something, it's a gland. Is the pineal an organ or a gland? It makes something. It's a pineal organ, not a gland. Does the thyroid make something, thyroxin? Yeah. If it makes something, it's an organ. It is not a gland. The thyroid is an organ. It's just that the Europeans have such a low amount of melanin that the organs behave like glands. So they tell you all of them are glands. Why not? So you can't obtain a certain level of wellness because you're treating your body like it's a white man's body. Carter G. Woodson said this better than myself. He said we have been miseducated. And it's, it's in science, too. We have been miseducated. Do cells divide? Sure. Everybody goes to school. So yeah, cells divide. You have never seen a cell divide in your life. A cell has a nerve attached to it and a blood supply attached to the nerve. A cell grows like a tree, which we call a stole, which is a melanin template. And then all the branches of mitochondria and the plasma ticker grows like leaves around the melanin root. Cells grow like trees. Corpuscles divide. Cells grow. So you have someone who's been studying medicine or biology, and you come in their office, and they're trying to treat you. Here you show up with all of these cells, and all they've ever studied was corpuscles. So how are you going to get so well with this person? When they treat you like a corpuscle, and you made a brain cell, nerve cells, it's just that we have been totally, thoroughly miseducated because we have never been taught the word melanin. When you're studying melanin, Someone should say the word melanin. If you study melanin particles called protons, electrons, and neutrons in chemistry, chemi mean black, black mean melanin, you study melanin, why don't you ever hear the word melanin? When that, what you're showing, studying, is melanin. Why is it no one wants to use this word melanin around you? Again, we have this concentration of color. It gets so concentrated that it appears black, and we call it black. Richard King called it the black dot. We have black. It's concentrated melanin, and all these other colors come from it. This is the structure of what you call a pendulum. At the pinnacle of the pendulum is concentration of melanin, and then it spreads out like an umbrella and you get these other colors, and that's what causes it to vibrate and spin. Oh, you've seen people use them. Some people use them to find out where to put their bed in their room. 
what foods they're allergic to, they put a pendulum over it. They first they program the pendulum to say up like this meaning yes and like this meaning no, or they may program to say clockwise mean yes and counterclockwise mean no, and they put the pendulum over the food and say, oh, it's saying no, I shouldn't eat this, or I'm allergic to that. That's a good way of testing it, but first your body has to be clean, because your body is an instrument. So you're not gonna get good results if your instrument is not good. And it kind of makes sense, you know that. Sick man, sick sperm. What's the problem? It's not hard to figure out. Maybe I shouldn't have used that word. It's not hard to figure out. So we're looking at the complex thing here, known as nucleus and molecules and all that sort of thing. And now we're looking at down the bottom here is the neutrons and protons, which I was referring to. And then we have atom, the spinning, how the cells spin and rotate constantly. And what we're trying to do is plug into that kind of energy so we can get a better understanding of things. Now, what the Europeans are calling psychic healing is just when they're able to use their melanin to a little degree. I want to show you one picture here before I move on of all of the symbolism here, how we have the radiation of sunlight at the top, radiation and sunlight at the top, then we have a divining rod right here. Then we have the ankh right here, which is another divining instrument. And all of these were used to help put a person better in touch with their consciousness and with their spirituality. Because you can't treat one without the other. You can't be physically ill unless you're mentally ill. You can't be mentally ill unless you're spiritually ill. You, you can't have one without the other. Let me show you emotional illness. A person who's addicted to sugar has an emotional problem here. Sugar is associated with love and affection. So whenever they're not able to give love and affection properly or receive love and affection properly, they'll eat sugar. Because that's the emotional cause of being addicted to sugar. Sugar is associated with love and affection in your birthday you know, Christmas, your, your Halloweenies and all that. So we associate sugar with love and affection. So when we're having problems with that, we eat a lot of sugar. Lord knows if you're on a job and you want white people to like you, you probably eat a lot of sugar. <laughs> and you know people that are addicted to sugar because they always use the term. How you doing, honey? What'd you say, sweetie? You know they're addicted. That's all they ever talk about. What'd you say, sweetie? <laughs> so I'm showing you again how the pyramid was used functionally. At the top, what you call the capstone, is where the energy converted. See, energy changes direction. It it can go this way, and then it changes direction and come back. And whenever energy changes direction, we call that ground. The energy is grounded. It's like the electrical symbol or electrical signal that comes from your brain to go to my arm and say, arm, move. The electricity goes down this muscle, and then it gets grounded. It changes direction. It comes back to my brain to say, I have moved. It's sort of like an electrical stove in your house. If the stove was grounded, it would never get hot because the electricity would go right back to the gas, to the electrical company, you follow me? But since it's grounded in that hot plate on top of it, it causes a lot of heat. It's not grounded, it just ends there. So if the electrical symbol from signal comes from my brain to my arm, through my muscle, if it ended here, this arm would heat up. But since it's grounded, it changes direction and comes back to my brain. So when we use ground, if we use it in a European sense, we mean one thing. If we use it in an African sense, we mean another thing. Just because we're using the same terms does not mean we're saying the same thing. That's the problem in science. A lot of times we just 
not saying the same thing. And I want to warn you, you get some information here. You're not obligated to go around teaching white people what you learned. Don't, don't, don't make that mistake. They have enough colleges, and universities, and horse biddles to get their act together. <laughs> they do not need you teaching them. Walk 10 blocks away from and teach a black child. Just don't be going around teaching them things. And even though you know that something is wrong, do not tell them it's wrong. You want to keep your ign enemy ignorant. Don't go around educating them. And I'm not trying to take you all through racism 101. I'm just trying to let you know there's some basic things here. In a medical situation, never tell a doctor, even if it's a black doctor, that they're wrong, because they get upset and they're liable to hurt you. Just, just tell them that, you know, you practice some religion that meets every Thursday in a phone booth and eat watermelon. <laughs> and that's why I won't take the vaccination shots. and they will not bother you. Believe me, trust me, I won't bother you. <laughs> well, I know they won't. <laughs> but you come to say well, all these facts about this is pus and this is chemicals going in my system, changing my DNA, making my children more clone, making my children more docile, I don't want this in my, they're gonna get upset. Don't do that. Oh. I sometimes I get run in my mouth and all. My wife's sitting there, and, and we have a health newsletter, African Holders Health, health Newsletter. It has a lot of good information in it. If you wanted some applications here, and you can see a, a sealer and get some more applications. Sealer, why don't you stand up so people know you? See, she has them right there. She does the newsletter, she's the editor. She says, I stay in my room and just do things. <laughs> I don't know what it is. In any case, um, I don't think I have to uh, overdo that one for you. I think you understand how the energy moves. I want to show you how it's spinning, how we divide that up into layers. How the spin is divided up into layers at a central focal point here with the I am. And then you go into imagination, knowing, conceptual, possession, possessive, intellectual, social, and sensory. How the energy is just spinning around and around, creating these force fields. Now, if you put a pin in a vacuum, a partial vacuum, and you take it out uh, and let it fall to the ground, it's going to jump each time it goes through one of those areas. It's just going to make a slight, slight little quiver. You know, the amazing thing about this is it's so simple, and yet it's so, some people just don't get it because it's, they think it's so simple. It is simple, quite. Even if I show you the circuits, which you call the electrical symbols that come from this whole study of the ankh. Now you see how the circuitry is coming from this ankh. It's a functional thing. Omega symbol comes from this ankh. Alpha signal comes from it. It's a functional thing. Unks are not just some kind of decoration. Now, I want to um, digress a little bit here, because people always ask me these questions, like I'm taking away everything that they want to eat and all. And I'm not trying to do that. So I'm just going to come off the psychic level here and just go right on the ground here with some basic things. There's some basic kind of things. Com protein, because people say, what am I going to eat? So I'm more psychic, so I'm more spiritual. What am I going to eat? You didn't took away everything, make doo-doo burgers and everything. Beans and rice, we're talking that protein combination there. Beans and rice is one. Corn and green beans is another. Corn and lima beans, millet and green beans, garbanzo beans or chickpeas as some people call it, seeds, tofu and rice, that's brown rice or basmati rice. 
whole grain pasta, sesame seeds and corn, bulgur, and dry beans. Those are protein combinations. For those who figured out, hold, hold it. Oh, okay. Now your body runs on amino acids. It doesn't really run on this protein. Now your body uses something called amino acids. The amino acids are put together by an organ called your liver that makes the, the young amino acids, and then whatever's needed is made right at the site that it's needed. First, the liver puts together a young amino acid, ships it to your muscle, and at the site of the muscle, it puts it together the, in the way it needs it. So the liver becomes very crucial in helping you to put together your amino acids. And the liver is very much damaged by processed oils, Tylenol, aspirin, the gel that gets absorbed into your body from latex and polyurethane condoms, and, which also causes cancer. Of course, the powder causes cysts and tumors. Uh, then the liver gets attacked by air pollution, radiation pollution, um, something that I, I've never been able to figure out yet in my life is scented toilet paper. <laughs> I have problems with that today because I know your ass can't smell it and I just don't understand <laughs> today why people still use it. We've been so hoodwinked. I mean, really, whew, that takes me out. All of these chemicals get into our bodies and, and it, it causes our liver to be compromised. So it loses its ability to structure the, the energy we need in, in the right fashion. You have it? Okay, thank you. Now I'm going to show you the, the proteins and the uh, ones you can use in place of. In place of the chicken fetus, like some people like to kill this, un, this unborn baby chicken and fry their brains and everything, and then scramble it up, and then eat this chicken fetus. Well, we all have some state of dysfunctionality, I suppose. So we have the navy and black beans, which gives you a comparable protein. Fish, we can use millet and lentils. Comparable protein, no problem. Beef, wheat and barley. Cheese, they have soybean cheese now and rice cheese. And really, there's no reason to even go there. But you can use soybeans and corn. And of course, this pig with feathers that you call chicken, the chicken eat anything. Chicken eat another dead chicken. I, I'm telling you, chicken eat anything. Chicken nothing but a pig with feathers. <laughs> Gabanza beans and raw peanuts. You don't want cooked peanuts. Those are some of the substitutes that you can use for the uh, proteins. It's a thing that everyone knows that cows don't eat steak in order to have muscle mass. They don't eat meat. Cows do not eat meat. So this thing about you have to have meat, I don't understand. Cows don't drink milk. Cows don't eat yogurt or ice cream. But if you own yourself a herd of cattle, you probably tell people to drink three glasses every day too. You remember all those Western movies with the cowboys and Indians, they would drive them a herd to McDonald's. Remember that. So you have that one, right? Because we, we want to keep it on, on the ground somewhat uh, here. And we apply those same principles that I mentioned before. We aim all of that to ma'at. Ma'at. You use this in your diet and the way you approach food. Because if you have a problem with food, it's probably addiction now. Excuse me. Nowadays, people are addicted to food. It's not that you eat because you're hungry, you eat because you're addicted. Addicted to the chemicals in the food, sex hormones in the food, the color of the food, the sexual shape of the food, and the radiation of the food. So foods are radiated to make them more addicting. They call it a barcode. So people are addicted to radiation. You've been around them. 
television on and they sleep and you turn the TV off, they wake up. Because the only way they can sleep is when they nuke themselves. They're addicted to the radiation. If you buy one of the, the companies have similar radiation barcodes on all their merchandise. So if you hooked on Procter & Gamble toilet paper, you're probably eating their candy bar too. And you hooked on that whole line. So they have a radiation addiction and the chemical addiction, which you call sugar and food additives. And then you have the color addiction. They usually use a lot of male colors on candy bars. Yellow and orange and red. And of course, they always name candy bars after men. And nobody seems to understand that the candy bar is shaped like a penis, has nuts on it. And when you open it up, it ejaculates. I mean, what's the problem here? <laughs> Everyone knows the sexual symbolism. They call candy bars after men, Babe Ruth, the Musketeers. That's three men you're sucking on now when you get to <laughs> You, you understand the sexual symbolism. Now, I see brothers buying a hot dog, getting all excited when they put it between two buns. <laughs> like I said, I was going to go there. So what we have to do is get a hold of the addiction. What we use for the addiction is phenolalanine, which is amino acid. It's called phenolalanine. It's used for addiction and craving. We use chickweed, which is a herb that's good for measles and colds, but it's called chickweed. We use that and phenolalanine, and we use something called vanadyl sulfate, which is a mineral which helps knock out that sugar craving. But do not take the serving on the label that says take one pill three times a day, you know right well that's for a healthy person. And you know you're sick. So you're going to know you need about four, three times a day, straight up. So you're looking at chickweed, phenolalanine, and vanadyl sulfate. That's just to help control that kind of addiction. But remember, we're talking about the, the Europeans. So if you're hooked on sugar, you're going to be hooked on alcohol because refined carbohydrates make a lot of alcohol. So you're used to a high level of alcohol. You should make one drop of alcohol every hour. But when you're eating bleached white flour and white rice, you're making like three to six drops an hour. That's too much alcohol. It's stressing your liver, causing your liver to get hard, which we call cirrhosis. It precipitates the minerals and it stays in there. So we're addicted to two things. We're addicted to the chemical we take and the chemical we make. That's the name of the game. If you eat meat, your body's going to make a lot of vinegar, you see. So you're addicted to the chemical you take and the chemical that your body makes. Meat is all right for the Europeans because it makes a lot of ammonia kind of things, you see. Ammonia has a quality of freezing when it's hot and boiling when it's cold. That's why the Europeans, room temperature, they, don't, they can't deal with this. You come in here and say the room's too cold. That's because you got sugar, and, and the sugar makes the alcohol from you eating a lot of carbohydrates, but they're making ammonia. So when the room is cold, they're hot. Aside from that, they physiologically haven't arrived to the state of where you are at anyway. As you know, you have the highest growth and development ratio of any race on the planet. You have more melanin in your ears, so you hear more sound. You have more melanin in your eyes, so you see more color. You have more melanin in your taste buds, so you taste the full flavor of food. No other race can do that. You have more melanin in your hair, which gives you more color bands. You have hair. The Europeans have fur. You have, you have evolved to a level of humanism that they are not at. So it's no need of you comparing yourself to them on that level, not on a biochemical level or on a, some kind of way scientific level. And never argue with them when they're explaining themselves. They say, we have a problem with sex? Believe them. Freud said they have a problem with sex. He studied white people, not black. So believe him. So just say, say it's a missing link between man and ape. Yeah, believe them. It's a white man. <laughs> believe them. 
If there's a missing link, he's it. This is straight up science. As you can see, I get disinvited to a lot of places. <laughs> you know, even when I was here in Atlanta with the Sugar Hill gang. Oh, y'all know this is the Sugar Hill. I'm not going to talk about the mayor. I'm not going to talk about the former chief of police. And I'm not going to talk about all the rest of them gay people in this town, because I'm a nice person. And they are victims of white supremacy, just like Michael Jackson is and Messy Jesse. <laughs> victims of white supremacy, just like Colin Powell. Or is that Colin and Bowles? <laughs> Victims of white supremacy, and that's how I view that. I don't, I don't get all angry with our brothers and sisters, because they need help and we need help. We are, we've got to get out of this thing together. So uh, what we're looking at was when we examine people that are addicted to food, or yourself may be addicted to food, understand that it's on purpose. The food of 1950 is not the food of the year 2000. It's, it's another chemical concoction. Now, you should ask yourself, Truth, am I really hungry? Are, are you really hungry when you eat? Uh, can you tell when you're hungry? Some people's intestines empties too fast, and when it empties too fast, they think they're hungry. Because we go by weight, we don't go by appetite. We say, I feel full. Well, what do you mean you feel full? Can't you tell when you're full? No, they have to say, I, I think I feel full. Because they used to a certain amount of weight impacted in their colon, about 15 pounds of manure caked up in their uh, colon. <laughs> and they go by that weight. And when they don't have that weight in there, they think they're hungry. You can tell someone who's having digestive problems. They're either belching or farting. Or if they're doing both, they may blow their brains out. I don't know. <laughs> Now you ask yourself, justice, is what you're doing with this food serving justice? How does my food choice weigh against the question I just answered? Am I really hungry? So you apply in my art, because we have to get out of this mess that we're in. And we have to make sure we use a military kind of logic. Everything is to make us more powerful. Your objective is not to be more my art. Your objective is not to be so sovereign, to have sovereignty, your objective is to have power, to rule this earth. That's military thinking. Everything is directed to the ruling of the earth, because if the black man don't rule this earth, it ain't going to be no earth. Our objective is to rule the planet earth, not to have more money, not to have more black colleges, but to rule. See, when you're thinking you want a better college, you're thinking social science. No, you want power to rule this planet earth. That's what you want. That's how the Europeans think, uh, whatever they call thinking, because actually they process information. Thinking is totally different from processing information. But that's another lecture. In any case, righteousness. Is the food worthy of God's creation, my body? Do you think what you're eating is righteous? Does it really make sense? If I were to give you a hamburger and tell you to put the hamburger in a bowl of milk and eat it, would you do it? Does that really make sense? You say, no, I wouldn't do that. Suppose I change the milk to cheese. Would you do it? See? If it didn't make sense, it didn't make sense. Then why all of a sudden it makes sense? Uh-uh. That's because you're crazy. That's why it makes sense. <laughs> Does this food work in unity with my goal of optimal health? You say, wait a minute. Does what I'm doing really make sense? Now, I know God knows what God is doing. Let's can we agree on that? Yeah, okay, okay. Now, if God wanted salt on the tomato, God would have put more salt in the tomato. So why is it every time God makes something, you say something wrong with it? Put some salt on this, some pepper on this. 
get a grip. Everything that God made is something wrong once you put it on your plate. Everything is sugar in the milk. There's sugar in the milk. There's sugar in the processed corn oil in the store. Even the perfumes that we like have to smell sweet or we don't like it. And we don't see that we're addicted to sugar. The perfumes have to smell sweet even. We're so addicted to sugar. So everything has to be changed that God likes. Everything. That's because we have a slave and master relationship with food. We do. See, food is your slave. Food is supposed to serve you, give you nutrition, give you energy. Food is my slave. Sex is my slave. Sex is supposed to give me an orgasm, give me pleasure. Where do we get the slave and master idea from? Why is food a slave? Why is sex a slave? Where do we get the slave and master idea from? Why does everything have to be processed? Why do they have to take the whole wheat and change it to white flour? Why does everything have to be processed? Why do you have to make everything into a Clarence Thomas? <laughs> Why is everything processed? You know a processed African is a Negro. You know that. There's nothing more processed than a Negro. The food's processed, we are processed. Slave and master, slave, everything. We apply it to food, we apply it to our relationship. Where did we learn this slave and master stuff from? Look at here. I'm going to process some whole wheat. I'm going to take this whole wheat and I'm going to take it to a factory. And the factory has machines in there that duplicate your kidney, your liver, your pancreas, small intestine, large intestines. Or I take some sugar cane to the factory. The factory is going to eat the sugar cane. The factory is going to eat the whole wheat. And when it finished eating the whole wheat in the sugar cane, we call it a processed food. A processed food is a bowel movement by definition. If you eat an orange, your intestines, liver, pancreas, are going to process that orange. And what comes out is a totally processed food known as a bowel movement. Hey, so if you go to the store and you buy bleach white flour, you buy white sugar, what are you buying? A bowel movement. You said it was processed. They're not hiding. They say it's processed. What do you think process is? Metabolizing. What do you think they did to slaves? Processed them, denatured them, changed them. They say, I ain't no African, I'm American. They've totally processed, and the food is totally processed. It's the same logic. You study the white man once, and you never have to study him again in your life, because he'll never change. Never. It takes melanin to change. Melanin. The people with melanin make the changes. We invented the calculus, astronomy, architecture, engineering, medicine, because melanin is a change agent. Without it, you can't change. You're talking about someone with the least amount of melanin, you're expecting them to change. <laughs> Get a grip. The Food and Drug Administration, the Federal Aeronautics Agency, FCC, FDA, all of those are agencies put about because white folks don't know how to change. They are there to police them. They don't trust each other. I'm, that's why they're there. That's why. That's why it's fair. That's why they have these agencies to the police the films, the police the, because they're out of control and you want them to change. That's why we have to eat in self-defense. Take some red clover one day, some burdock the next day, dandelion root the next day, echinacea the next day. Take a blood cleanser every day. Every day, because the air is polluted, the water is polluted, the food is polluted, and most of your friends are polluted. And they're giving up all these toxic films, because the media does smell different from vegetarians. I'm here to tell you. I'm telling you. Lord, Lord, Lord. Frankly, I, 
some of the vegetarians, I, they all right with me, but a garlic fart, I mean, that's what was made in hell. <laughs> anyway, nothing personal. <laughs> Please. So what I'm trying to say is, you don't have to look for a solution. The solution is to get more into your psychic ability, more into your spiritual ability. It's already there. We have to get more into it. In order to get more into it, you have to throw off all the luggage and stuff that's stopping you from getting into it. You got to stop listening to that little white man in your head. You got to throw off all that luggage so you can get more immersed into your spirituality, more immersed in your psychic ability, because it's there. We're the most psychic people on this planet. The more melanin, the more psychic. The more melanin, the more civilized. The more melanin, the more intelligent. We got the juice. Everybody runs off of us. The people, the brothers and sisters come here from Africa, they come here to Africa, go to schools, and these schools are founded on slave money. They're running off of our juice. Yeah. Everybody's running off our juice. Stolen from us. Edison, a thief. A total thief. I'm telling you, the man is a thief. This other boy, uh, Einstein, give me a break. A thief. What did he say anyway? What did he say? I'm telling you, Elvis Presley, a thief. Every time, <clears throat> we're the only thing that's going on. The only thing that's going on in this planet is black man and a black woman. There's nothing else going on. Everybody rips us off. I'm trying to tell you, rip your own self off for a change. Don't let the Koreans take, start taking from their own selves. Go back and say, where did this stuff nutrition come from? Africa. Well, why did they have no cavities? What were they eating? Go back to eat some of that, fresh fruits and vegetables, <coughs> sprouts. Yes. Go back to say, this is a spiritual relationship I have with food. It's not a, a slave master relationship where I'm taking from the food. I give to Mother Nature, Mother Nature gives to me. It's a reciprocity here. This is mod. We go back to that, and we can recapture some of this energy. And then it won't seem so weird when we go into our grandmother's house and she say, son, uh, don't uh, put your shoes under the bed like that, because you may not get out of the bed. Turn your shoes around, have them facing out, you see. When they start talking all these old spiritual things, because these are what you call today icons, it connects her to Africa. What little piece of Africa she could have, she had that. And you say, there's something wrong with her. No, there's something wrong with you, because you don't understand what's going on here. I'm telling you, my grandmother died about a couple of weeks ago, and uh, her mother was a slave. This is our last connection to slavery. She was like 99, something like that, and her mother was a slave. And so my grandmother didn't talk much. So we didn't, we were little, say, why don't she talk much? You know, she didn't have no girlfriends, like ladies today call up each other. She didn't have no friends like that. We didn't piece it together till at her funeral. The slaves did not have friends because their friends would be sold. And they didn't talk much because they was, may get in trouble. So you couldn't talk much. They were very quiet. And she gave us a biscuit and butter on it for lunch. Because you know, I have slave narrative books I read. That was a big deal meal for a slave. So she thought she was giving us a big meal. My brother used to eat it before he went to school because he didn't want to buy see his butter and biscuit. You know? That's right. But to her, raised by her grandmother, that's what slaves ate. She was feeding us like a slave, which is good because that history was forced on us. Whether we liked it or not, it was forced on us. Sometimes we run out of bacon, and she just poured the grease on the bread. Because we did, hey, what you frown about? Anyway, look at here. We couldn't afford the bacon, so we saved the grease. <laughs> I'm telling you, and we just poured the grease on the thing. I'm telling you. And she kept a little can of grease there. Because she used that grease. So we get a cold, she fry some onions in that grease and put it on our chest to pull out the mucus. That grease was a medicine cabinet. Then our legs was ashy, she said. Before we went to church, she'd rub that grease on your legs, be shining. So, man, you slip out of your own drawers. be so much grease on you. <laughs> 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 
But I'm telling you, it was a whole lot in, in that little thing that, that she had was connected to a whole world of Africa. But we were just little kids and we just didn't pay any attention to it. She would leave little, write little notes and, and leave it in, in, inside of the wall because she wanted, didn't want evil spirits. If an evil spirit come in the house, they had to stop and read the note. <laughs> you know, my grandfather kept a whole refrigerator full of newspaper. He said, something's after him. So he kept newspapers. <laughs> he spread around the house so spirits wouldn't get to him and had to read the newspaper. But he was a little wacky anyway. You know, he told us he was an FBI agent. And we believed him. <laughs> we didn't know he was leaving the house every morning to chase women. We thought, oh, he's going to see agents. <laughs> what <were> we know? <laughs> he said, I'm going out. I got this case to solve. <laughs> we said, go, Grandpa, go, go. <laughs> Chasing women. <laughs> he was so much of a dog, he ate Alpo for breakfast. <laughs> Look, here. I better stop so I can answer some questions here. <laughs> I'll stop the formal part of the lecture and I answer some questions. Thank you. I believe it's a microphone already set up there. So you can yeah, anybody wants to ask questions, the microphone's in the middle aisle there. Come down to the microphone. Which one was that? Oh. Did I put all of it up there? You saw this part? You didn't see that part. OK. So a lot of people have different needs. I have bought my hollow range the house because people always ask me that. I said, I better bring that because they're going to ask me how you arrange the house in the African system. So, uh, and all that stuff, so you, you just can't say everything. But I'm getting very quiet as I get older. I used to talk to myself, and you know how you sit in a chair and you'd be talking to yourself? Oh, what am I do today and all that kind of stuff? I don't even talk to myself that much anymore. I think I'm either getting on my own nerves or just getting quiet. Yeah. But this is mine as applied to how you eat. Balance, will this food energize me in a positive way? Order, does the food fulfill my positive nutrient requirements? Propriety, is the food in accordance with my goal to decrease my intake of packaged processed food? You can tell sick people, they have a lot of processed food in their wrappers in their trash can. The more processed food wrappers they have in their trash can, the more processed they are. You can tell. They have all of this bags from McDonald's and this and that. The more processed stuff in a trash can, the more processed they are. And of course, compassion. Do I have kindness and, and a healthy understanding of my body so that I do not feel deprived by not having fat and high calorie foods? Reciprocity. Is, is, is taking this food into my temple going to reward me with optimal health? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Brother Africa. Thank you. I want to ask you, what's your take on the issue of blood type? You familiar with eat right with your blood type? Mm, it was based on some research that uh, says the Europeans were here over a million years ago, and there's no documentation. To, the research is based on the lie, actually. It's not, it's not grounded. Scientifically, it's not. Thank you. Yeah. That's right. Very good. The information is good. If you have that blood type and you eat junk food, that's what's going to happen to you. That part's correct. So I use that part. Henry Bernardo. Yes, sir. When's your presentation, my brother? Tomorrow, brother. Tomorrow. Don't miss it. Good information. Good information. Thank you for your uh, presence. It's always a treat and yes. education. I want to ask about the uh, issue that's coming out of New York City and now uh, South Jersey and Philadelphia area where I'm from concerning these mosquitoes mm. and uh, this so-called uh, virus that's spreading around. As you know, in some of the reports last year, there was a virus that allegedly spread through New York City and killed up a bunch of people. And now the early reports coming through the uh, media is that uh, both New York City and uh, now Philadelphia, too, and most of the cities in between are gearing up for a major campaign to begin spraying again this spring because they claim that new live mosquitoes 
have been found in new dead birds throughout these metro regions. And I wish you, I, I wish you would uh, speak to that issue because there's a lot of people, when I do my uh, travels through that particular area, there's a great deal of concern about this and people are not getting any information whatsoever. Yeah, I, I know a little bit on it. Of course, Brother Keely probably has more on it than I do, don't you, Keely? <clears throat> Yeah, Keita would be the, the man for that. I do know they had formalamide in it. That's the that's an ingredient in the spray causes birth defects. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that's in it, and I know they can't even cure roaches in New York, so mosquitoes is out of the question, as far as I'm concerned. It's it's a bogus uh, plan. I don't know what all is in the chemical warfare which they devised, which is heavy in the black community, but it has nothing to do with the virus and all to do about biological warfare to me. If we're talking about Europeans then that's, that's probably where it's coming from. But um, I don't know why they're going for it because it does have, they did put in New York paper that it does have formaldehyde in it, which caused birth defects. It was used as a birth uh, control pill years ago. And it's aimed at us mostly. What, what if, if, did you find on it? Well, the melatonin, the melatonin is uh, organophorin. Mm -hmm. And it's an organophorin. Brother Keaton, we might as well avail ourselves to the research because he, he thoroughly researches these matters. All right, and I'll make this as brief as I possibly can. <clears throat> Again, the malathion itself is an organochlorinate, mm -hmm. series of compounds that came out of the research of the uh, Nazis during World War II, of which Zyklon B was one of their more famous organochlorinates. When it comes down to the issue of the disruption of our natural biological processes, these organochlorinates are particularly disruptive to the body's natural hormone system, uh, either mimicking or blocking the action of very vital necessary hormones. The very same process that would defeat the biological entity of an insect the, 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 does the same thing to human beings. So it's just, it's absolutely suicidal for anyone to propose using chemicals to kill pests when we can use physical means or other means of neutralizing the pests. But the whole key about it is, and this is perhaps, well, this is what most definitely you did teach me and I think is relevant here, is that we have this clinging on to the belief in viruses. Yeah. And as long as we cling to the belief of viruses, other will use us clinging to that belief to control us as they control the viruses of which we are afraid. So for you, Brother Dr. Africa, can you clarify this very simple question? What is a virus? Uh, a virus, as far as science is concerned, not the social stuff that you've been told. As far as science goes, it's a particle of a dead cell. It does not live, it cannot reproduce, and it does not grow. It's a particle of a dead cell. If you want to say where it comes from, it could be come from some organ inside of the cell, like the mitochondria or whatever the organ that died, they can get that particle from it. And that's where you, that's where you get all these names from. When we break down that chemical in the particle virus we call them mineral salts. Those are mineral salts like sodium chloride, magnesium chloride, calcium chloride. That's what you call ashes to ashes and dust to dust. When, when you die, you turn into dust. When cells die, they turn into dust, but we call them mineral salts. So they are actually mineral salts, which are the things that viruses are made of. And you can always find minerals in it living thing, so it's for full game there. But the issue about the virus is based on having a scapegoat. Uh, scapegoat is a good thing, like someone dies to save you or something like that. You have to find a scapegoat for you messing up your own life and not wanting to take the weight. So we have a lot of scapegoat philosophies. I'm not being negative, I'm just saying we like someone else to take the responsibility of our life, be it Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, we look for a scapegoat. And so they know this will sell because they're using the same philosophy. It's the same philosophy that made E.T. a hit. He was mimicked Jesus coming. So they use the same approach. They use it in all the commercials, the same approach. There's some savior coming, Mr. Clean. You know, it's the same. 
It's not a new theme. They just run the same game over and over again. And why we still go for it, I don't know. But it's, it's no such thing as a virus. So it's nothing you can get to kill a virus. How can you kill something that's already dead? Yes, sir. Peace. Oh, Jelani, when you finish, come on down and help me pass out these things, brother, man. OK, bro. <laughs> Boy, he's but, from Florida. But um, uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, in relationship to uh, the fact that there are uh, extreme immense amounts of clone vegetables and fruits nowadays, how does the body respond to clone vegetables and fruits? And can it still extract what it needs for its own supplements, the body, that is? Yeah, well, we're talking about the, uh, whether something is cloned by nature or cloned by man, or it's hybridized by nature or hybridized by man. When we're talking about something that's cloned, the soil itself is cloned. I mean, let's get a break here. The soil itself is cloned. That's what you call herbicides and pesticides and all that stuff. And the nuclear waste they use to mix with the soil, the soil itself is cloned. So don't, don't, so the thing is that your body, if it's healthy, the key is to be healthy, to eat properly, exercise, have some sort of spiritual connection to the power out there, the power that's in you, actually. And to be healthy, what we have is your body, well, Europeans figure this one out. This is really, this is a good one. The food has no energy in it. When you lose all that topsoil, we started off with about 30 millimeters of topsoil, now we're down to less than two. When we lost all that topsoil, we lost the ability to have this healthy plants. So the plants don't have any kick in them. The only way to give them some kick is to mix them with a human cell or a pig cell or some other cell. Now the body energizes itself to get rid of this clone, and so that stimulation you got from, from getting a, your body getting rid of the, the clone is what you think you're getting energy from the food. But actually, your body's having a drug reaction to the food. Now, what the body does is something that we call chelate. It's going to try to isolate this toxic stuff and get to the good stuff. It always splits up things anyway, what you call enzymes. It's going to break it all, break it all down, and it's going to have a pile of good stuff here, a pile of bad stuff here. It said, I don't want the bad stuff. It's going to kick it out, use the good stuff. The problem with that is that it takes melanin to use this good stuff. And um, if you're not very healthy, then the melanin can't use it, so the melanin will bond the bad stuff. Because melanin works against you at this point. It will bond the bad stuff and let the good stuff go. The body has what we call a negative uh, reaction. You're, you're, you breathe based on carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide. That's what triggers your breathing. We call it a negative drive. So the body's gonna pick up the negative driver and hope that you do something healthy so it can get the good driver. Uh, but if you should just eat as many green vegetables as possible, because they have mimicked the melanin crystal, which you call chlorophyll, and that alone will help your body kick out what is bad. Just eating fresh fruits and vegetables, drinking water, real water, not tap water, because that's synthetic water drinking weir water, spring water, and if you can't do that, drink the still water. Putting that kind of energy in your system, you can, you can get past this thing, because this thing is most harmful to the Europeans. It's not as harmful to us, but it's more harmful to the Europeans. And don't approach it like, uh, the purpose of you eating healthy is to get more power. Just keep that in your focus. Yes. Peace. Um, scared that they're giving to people as far as the herbs and mixing medications and pharmaceuticals and they're, you know, scaring people about, you know, taking different herbs and everybody's, oh, no, I can't take herbs and take my medicines. Can you elaborate on that? Well, it's, it's the pharmaceutical guys. They own a lot of the health food stores now. And, of course, Rexall distributes herbs. Uh, so they are trying to get their market share. And in order to get that market share, they're saying the only authority on whether you can take a herb with an aspirin is the pharmacist at Eckert's Drugs. This is what they're preaching. And you're right, it's a scare tactic. But follow me here. If you see someone 
and they're all big and bulky. You say, well, he's so big and bulky, he has to be a, a football player, a wrestler, because you can tell by how the person looks, what kind of profession the person has, usually. You say, that person has to be a, a wrestler. And you see a lady that's moving gracefully, you say, she probably is a dancer. Because you can associate a profession with a person physically. You follow me? Now, if a doctor stands next to a plumber, can you tell the difference? No, you can't. You should be able to look at that person and say, that person has to be a doctor, that person has to be a nurse because they look so damn healthy. They have to be something. So you look at, look at this pharmacist who's telling you about these herbs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Look at him. <laughs> look at him. <laughs> no, no, no. The most, uh, mostly what people are concerned with is the sedatives and uppers and downers. Uppers are known as triggering the sympathetic nervous system, and the downers, which we call the parasympathetic nervous system, or the female principle. And uppers are the male principle. So we say that if you're taking a speed, don't take a speed herb with it, like ephedra, epinephrine. You heard of epinephrine and norepinephrine? We call that ephedra. Ephedra is just a stimulant. It doesn't give you any energy, it's just a stimulant. A lot of people just buy liquid ephedra in California when they can't get the crack, because it will drive you. So, they're saying, don't take a speed herb if you're taking a speed, because it's going to speed you up more. And don't take a herb that slows you down if you're taking a sleeping pill, because it's going to slow you down more. That would be chamomile, catnip, valerium, those kind of herbs. They say, don't take something that's going to slow you down when you're already slowed down. But the thing they didn't tell you is the cycle of the medicines you're taking. If the barometric pressure is higher, the insulin is going to be less effective. Why don't they go back and tell you the weather and its relationship to the, the synthetic drugs? That's on a little audio I have on weather. It explains all that stuff to you, how the weather is a factor in taking aspirin, in taking antihistamines, in taking cough suppressants. The weather is a factor. The weather is even a factor in sexual intercourse. When the barometric pressure is, is high, there's all this weight on your circulatory system, it decreases your circulation. When the weight lifts off, you're going to get horny. All you're doing is reacting to the barometric pressure. You follow me? Oh, that, that's, this is what this moon thing is about. When people, they say the moon is full and all that. This is what I'm talking about here. The barometric pressure and how it takes effect on you. That's why they always plan these things on a certain time of a year. Why do they always plan this stuff during the summer? Why don't they ever talk about these outbreaks during the winter? Why is it the big outbreaks always occur during the summer when the children are out of school? The political use of disease. You have to go into the disease as an industry. It's a disease industry. That's what we have to look at. Once a disease becomes an industry, it lives forever. AIDS is not a disease, it's an industry. Once a disease becomes an industry, it lives forever. That's the problem. We are not looking at it militarily, like I told you before. The Europeans are military people. Don't you get it? They're fighting all the time. They have a military logic, and they approach everything from military logic. Disease is not to make you sick. Disease is to help them retain power. You have to look at it militarily here, because we're dealing with the pharmaceutical companies are controlled by military people. Ralston Perina, General Mills, all are controlled by military people. That's what's on their board of directors. Their whole approach to us is military. The people on the board of directors of Toyota are military people. This, the game is military, and we practice social science, going around singing some songs and marching and stuff. This is a military situation here. Marching is a tactic for power. If it's not working, scratch it. That's how military people think. Kwanzaa is a tool for power. You got to update it to get power. If you freeze it, you freeze your tactic. You got to start looking at things military. Basketball is a military game. Military is about planning. Every time something happens, they get in a huddle and plan something, damn it. It's military. Everybody's using it. Football is a game of tactics. Military. Plan every move. Get in a huddle, plan. That doesn't work, scratch it. They're not going to run the same play every time. It's military.
They know right well, you gonna, we're going to sing some songs and pour a libation for Brother Jamil, I mean, H. Rap Brown. They know damn well that's all we're going to do because we're not thinking military. I stood right beside him in West End, and they stopped his Jaguar and searched it for a shotgun. That was 15 years ago. I was right beside him when he did it. He came to my house in South Carolina and said, brother, get your book out. Walk with me in the woods. This is the size of him you don't even know. I'm telling you, the man's, in any case, I don't want to go off on that one, because it needs some going off on, I'm telling you, because we got to start thinking military, because we're dealing with the Europeans, and they are military people. There's nothing more military than the white woman. She who rocks the cradle controls the nation. You better start thinking twice on this situation. If a woman takes your baby off your breast and make you put her baby on her breast, there's something wrong with that woman. Something wrong with that woman. She is not your sister. Feel just as comfortable sleeping with a dog as sleeping with OJ. You know, I don't like to go there, because, you know, um, <laughs> really, 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 really. Because I, I, I went to school, you know, and I, I went to school in Europe, and we used to go in the woods and just sleep with flowers and stuff. You know, I, you know we're just real passive kind of thing. I'm, I'm more at home with daffodils than I am with some people, you know? But that was long ago. Because I went to school with these crackazoids, I mean Europeans. <laughs> and we were around the lake with candles at midnight because they said the lake was upset. So we prayed for the lake. And I said to myself, brother, you better get a grip on yourself. <laughs> I'm standing around there, you know, they're all praying for the lake because the lake's upset. And I got 50 million brothers over here in America and I'm praying for a damn lake. I'm saying, I better, you know, something. I'm holding my candle, but I was thinking something else. They think of something totally different. I said, I got to get a hold of myself here praying for a lake. You know, Whew. that's some scary stuff in the woods with some crackers. Whew. You know. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I didn't mean to bring that up. <laughs> hey, ask me another nutritional question. <laughs> Yes, sir. Hopefully this will, this will fit a bit. Uh, thanks for the lecture so far. Thank you. I want to ask, um, you had mentioned earlier about science or the human body, or science a model of the human body, and you mentioned an analogy with the car. If a car is not functioning properly, you clean it out, you change your oil, stuff like that. Now, on the path to proper nutrition, you know we have been abusing our bodies for, for years putting all that poison they call milk and stuff like that in your bodies. So to clean it out, what would be a practical ma'at solution to, to, to start out on? Because like I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, but it's like putting, if you, if you know you have done a lot of bad in the past to your body, just adding that stuff might not be the best thing to do without getting the, the, the organ or the, 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 the tool properly cleanse before you move along that path of proper eating and dieting and stuff like that. I've heard of a method called colonic. I want to know if you have heard of that or what if that's a, a good um, thing to do, like that these are the villa in the stomach, the bowels and stuff like that, getting the cleansers by that method, animals and stuff like that. Just to hear your point of view on getting the body straight before you actually, yeah. Yeah, um, a valid uh, question there. I'm mostly uh, from a treatment background. I'm, theory is good and all that, but I'm from a treatment background. I like to stress that so you understand that sometimes I've had to remove the bowel movement with my hands from people's rectum, uh, put on two rubber gloves, and just digitally take the impactation out because it wasn't moving any other way. And sometimes I've had to use enemas, but I would put it, mix the laxative herb in the enema, the senna, the cascara sagrada, make a tea out of that, put it in the enema bag, and squirt it in the rectum, rather than drink it and pass it through the small, large intestine before I get where I need it at. I went straight to the place. 
So it's according to the, where the person is in their wellness, what they need to, to further improve their wellness. So in some cases, the colonic is good. In some cases, the enema is good. In some cases, digitally removing it is good, providing that the brother is all right. I don't know if I get emotionally involved in that. <laughs> So I would suggest that you strengthen your liver with some dandelion root or milk thistle, because the liver is the one that's been really stressed with this kind of a junk food regimen. And do something for the pancreas, probably some bilberry uh, to strengthen the pancreas. And to try to get some of the uh, addiction to the bodily made alcohol out of your system with some kutsu. K-U-D-Z-U, that gets rid of alcohol craving. So I would use the milk thistle, the bilberry, and the kutsu to help get rid of those kind of toxins that were uh, damaging to the liver and the pancreas as well as to the uh, alcohol made in your system. Kutsu is that plant you find all along this highway here, 75, 85 on the side of the road. They brought it here in, to Georgia from Japan to feed the cattle and the slaves. It's all, all up down the road. You can't miss kutsu. It has those big, broad leaves. You see it growing on the fence. That's kutsu. It was a feed for cattle and livestock here. Uh, but it's good for alcohol addiction. So I would start there. And um, it's kind of thin, on a natural health food store, like the capsules that sell. Yeah. yeah, you can get it in capsule. You can get it loose. Uh, They'll, they'll probably have some kind of shotgun formula, which they call a colon cleanser, which is usually a laxative mixed with a bulking agent like psyllium. As long as they mix it with a bulking agent, they call it a colon cleanser. Uh, but the objective is to take your col colonic naturally with some slippery elm powder or okra, something that can give you a natural colonic, working with nature rather than to go against nature by squirting the uh, the, uh, yeah, CKLS is uh, made by Paul Goss, is a good product. Yeah. Parquet Slim is the same thing, <clears throat> which I use Parquet Slim instead of CKLS because I can make the doses weaker, stronger. Yeah. Yes, sir. How are you again? All right. Um, could you elaborate on the connection on mind control and the lack of nutrition in this country, probably the world? specifically this country and how, how the lack of nutrition facilitates the mind control. Oh, it's, um, we're talking about mind control, how you can manipulate and control uh, moods and thoughts by taking certain vitamins and nutrients out of the diet or putting too much of a certain nutrient into the diet. Um, a lot of times when you have a processed food, it processes you. We have something in a plant that we call manganese, Manganese is known as the nurturing vitamin. If you have a lack of that, you won't be able to nurture your child if you're a woman. So we, they have something in the plant called a manganese. It's in the stump of the plant. It blocks the plant's ability to absorb manganese. And once you put a blocker on the manganese absorption, the plant will not produce a seed. Then you get seedless grapes, seedless oranges. So what you try to do is put a blocker on the stump and in our case, it's called a, a melanin. You put a blocker on it to stop the person from having manganese, which means they will not be able to love themselves or love someone that looks like themselves. So how to deprive the person of the manganese is to throw them off with a salt ratio. If you can throw off the salt, you can throw off the calcium magnesium, which would naturally throw off the manganese. So they have a lot of salt in our community salt pork, salt chips, salt in the soda. Remember salt dehydrates your system? Sugar dehydrates your system and so does alcohol. They're known as dehydrating foods. Drinking a soda makes you thirsty. Drinking beer or wine makes you thirsty. If you put alcohol on your skin, it'll drop your skin. It dehydrates you. So it's a trick bag that got you and when you drink the soda, it's gonna make you thirsty, guaranteed. So what they're trying to do chemically is to throw off the ratio of the calcium magnesium, which will throw off the manganese. That's what they're trying to do chemically. And they can do that with salt, 
or they can do that on a hormone level with a hormone blocker. Now, if you put a, this, uh, I don't know just how to explain this blocker things. Um, you have a signal, you have a signal that runs, remember, the messages are, in your body are transmitted by water. If you're into European science, you just measure information by electricity. Electricity is one, Mag magnesium is the second one, but water is the primary element used to transmit signals from your brain to the rest of your body. So the objective is, is to change the water, which we call how thick and thin the water is, which we call specific gravity, you see. So we're gonna change the water. We change the water with salt, or we can change the water with a hormone blocker, with what you call birth control pills. Remember, the effect of everything is to get to the child, not to the adult. The birth control pill is not named at, aimed to the woman, it's named, aimed at the child. The prophylactic is not named at the man, it's named at the sperm. The Viagra is not named at the man, it's aimed at the sperm. Viagra, is, 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 it causes the blood to pool. When you pull the blood in the penis, the penis gets erect. You follow me? But the Viagra pulls the blood in the brain, in the eyes, which makes your vision blurry, and it pulls it in your ear, which makes you dizzy, but it pulls it in the sperm. You got me? So it's pulling water in the sperm where it shouldn't be, which causes the cells to swell up and lose their ability to absorb nutrients, to absorb manganese. So you're gonna have a Viagra child, which will have, be a child who will not have the ability to absorb love and affection even if it's coming in the right direction. See, the thing, what we're talking about mind control is this. The objective, see, if you look in social science, you're gonna miss this thing. You gotta look military science. If I put a Ritalin addict child in the third grade class or the fourth grade class, the objective is not me putting a Ritalin addict child in the class. The objective is the children in the class because they become codependent. They become used to a child, a person going off all the time. So when they have a relationship to them, a normal relationship is with a sister that goes off or a brother that goes off. When you view in codependency, it's worse than the person hooked on the drug. Mm -hmm. That's when you, if you study just alcoholism. They ask you, a woman married to an alcoholic, alcoholic, who's worse off? The woman married to the alcoholic. Because she's gonna do everything in her power to maintain him as an alcoholic to right. keep herself in power. Right. It's a sick relationship, but she's twice as worse off as he is. So what they're trying to do in mind control is to put a Ritalin addict in every classroom to create codependent behavior. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they will seek a dysfunctional relationship, or if they have a functional relationship, they will make it dysfunctional because they were raised as dysfunctional relationships as normal. Because we have changed the value of normal. We have done what they call in, in advertising remass. We have remass normal. We have normal and, and remass normal. This is how you lose the whole effect here. When we're chemically modifying a person, the old, the old stuff you, you're thinking about where you have to put some drug in somebody's arm and all that stuff, that's television. Even when I was in school in New York, just, just studying, I went to a, a, a college just, just devoted to compulsive disorders. I went to the American College of Addictionology and Compulsive Disorders. All we studied was that for a whole year with Dr. Bloom, who was the founder of all of this crazy stuff that y'all are talking about now. What these little crack, uh, white uh, scientists, <laughs> I'm trying not to be ghetto. <laughs> you know, when I was little, this is a side, I get back to it. When I was little, it was a show called Art Link Letters. And these children would come on television, sit up there, and then the white man would make them say cute things. And a little girl was sitting there in the chair, and she had the little bacon grease on her leg. I could tell it was bacon grease, you know. So she was sitting there all nice in the chair and everything with her little plaits on, looking like a little black Shirley Temple. And out they went over there and said, well, what did your mother tell you before you came here? She said, my mother said, don't act like a nigga. <laughs> in any case. So what, what, what has happened with this whole range here is that 
they taught us there's a virtual reality. You've seen this virtual reality, policemen and stuff. They have virtual reality policemen that can shoot you with a virtual reality gun and kill you dead. You think their numbers is a problem? Mm -mm. Their technology is a problem. They got the technology to that level that they don't need but one of them. Sit around, run a computer, keep all of us in order. So in any case, they got a virtual reality head that comes down while you're sitting in a chair, which in a couple minutes, it reorganizes electricity in your brain, just like that. Just like that. It doesn't take a needle and all that stuff. They went from working on crystallized melanin to liquid melanin to gas melanin. And we're just studying crystallized melanin. The game has gone all the way to gas melanin. And we're just studying crystal metal. The game has already gone to another level. When, when you, so in any case, what they've done now is started to make a new relationship to food. They start putting the vaccinations in bananas because they're trying to do a new relationship to food with the children, a crossing relationship. There's no difference between a drug and a food. To us, there's such a thing as a drug, there's such a thing as a food, but now they have done a remasking, they have crossing relationships, fascination bananas. It's gone to such a, you, you can't conceive the mind of the European because we don't understand the mind. The mind is not what sick man Freud said it was. That's a Greek fairy tale. A Oedipus, you heard of Oedipus and Id, and it's, that's a Greek fairy tale. It's just that we don't recognize it as a fairy tale because they use the Greek language. But if he used English, you would say, that's a fairy tale. How can a grown man say the mind is structured like Goldilocks and three bears? That's what Freud did. The European mind does not function like no damn Greek fairy tale. You've been studying a fairy tale instead of the European. You gotta study the European. You're studying the European's fairy tale. And you know the mind is not structured that way. The, the mind processes information. You listen to me and you're processing it, right? That's what you're doing. A mind that thinks does something totally different. Totally different, because I can say one word and you start hearing music if you're black. Or you start shaking your leg if you're black, because now you're storing information. You're storing it. You're st and I said, you stored it. You can go back and retrieve it later just by kicking your damn leg. That's black. That's why we move so much. Because we're storing them, we're talking to each other. We're throwing information everywhere. Next time I need that, I just do like that. Got it. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> storing information. So they're doing a masking and remasking. When I was, um, what was that? I was in New York and they had an orgy in the third grade. Because the teacher, put the bad kids in the third grade in one room, and she went to the other room. She came back to the other room, they were having an orgy. They said they were playing Jerry Spring Ass, whatever his name is. All this stuff is going on in the classroom. Totally different ball game. So we, we're crossing the relationship between food and a drug now. We also have another thing going on with learning. The learning that we used to do was like uh, one and one is two. Then the child says, yeah, one and one is two, and three and three, and you go through that kind of progression like that. That's not how you do it anymore. You say, one and one is two only if it makes you feel good. That's right. Because that's how they, they're learning now. It's only good if it makes you feel good. Only do your work if it makes you feel good. <laughs> if it doesn't make you feel good, it's, it's not worth it. You see, they are attaching a whole lot of things, riders, onto information now. So the mind control is done by the computer games, which uses European logic and European logic alone, which shows relationships where women beat up men. China, Russell on TV, I don't know if you're aware of this, the children watch China. Women beat up men and men beat up women on TV. They have on all these crossing gender roles where there's no such thing as gender anymore. We used to say a man and a woman. That don't mean anything anymore. They have cross genders now. So when you say a man and a woman, you haven't said anything to kids coming up now. So you're, what you're saying is one thing, but how they interpret it is a total another thing. That's why these little, the Williams, the whatever those boys' name is, Wayans, yeah, the Wayans brothers, yeah. 
And this travesty smiley, whew, <laughs> another issue altogether. These guys come on TV and that commercial for that movie is hitting an elderly black woman in the face. You've seen it. So they help in promoting this whole cross thing that's going on. One of them acts like a little gay guy, gets upset and the white man holds him in his arm. I don't know if you've seen this stuff. This stuff is devastating. The little stuff that was done to us was subtle. We wanted love and affection, and our mother gave us a white bottle of milk. So we associate love and affection with white. That's the effect of the bottle of milk. You think it's a cow's milk. No, it's the effect of associating white with love and affection with a white bottle of milk. But they're coming from a whole nother range now with this thing. A whole nother range. Nonetheless, uh, I'll get more at that later. Yes, ma'am. Yes, hotel. hotel. I remember you in Los Angeles three years ago with your uh, debate. Oh, that homosexual, yes, homosexual debate. Brother oh, man. Woo, he tore him up. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, um, he wanted a date. Go on. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> you broke it down. Like, oh, yeah, that was a rough wow. one. My wife took out insurance on me when I went out there, didn't you, Sela? <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, but anyway, brother, it's always something. Um, just a few days ago, um, I've been going through a cleansing, you know, do, eating the live foods, you know, all the raw and everything, uh, cutting down on the cooking, cooked foods. And um, just the other night, sometime last week, I broke my raw diet and I said, let me go get some rice drinks, right? Kind of had a <laughs> taste for something sweet. And um, a few minutes later, my heart started racing. My heart was pounding and my, my body started vibrating. And I'm like, what is that? It was scary. I walked outside, which happened to be a, um, a cool night because I thought that that would help me to relax. And I tried to lay down and it, was, it got worse. And I said, what is this? So I got on the phone and called up a friend of mine who studies nutrition and everything. He said, what did you eat exactly? And I told him, I said, rice cream. He said, what? Read me the ingredients on that label. I got to malt barley, he said. Ah, that is it. He said, that's one of the aliases of MSG. So here we go with this monosodium glutamate. Can you tell us anything about that, if you know any other aliases? Because, you know, I call myself trying to be healthy, eating right, doing everything. And here, here, here's something else, monosodium glutamate. You're yeah. putting it, you know, it's in just about everything, you know? Yes. Um... So, it's a salt. This monosodium glutinate is a salt. There are many salts, and many of the salts don't even taste salty. It helps the, the uh, solution ret retain the water. That it, uh, like uh, white sugar's name is corn syrup. If you see corn syrup, that's white sugar. Dextrose, glucose, all of those are other names for white sugar. Sucrose is a combination of fructose and glucose. And your body's not used to eating that high level of sugar. All of this high level of sugar which we are eating is rather abnormal. The older fruits and vegetables, which people call non-hybridized, were small. The big apple that you see now, those big apples, that was not around 1950. These big bananas and grapes, those were much, much smaller when our ancestors were eating them during slavery. We're eating them as such a, they're so large and have so much sugar in it, it's really stressing our pancreas. It stresses your pancreas, which means that it kills the melanin centers in your pancreas. The melanin centers in your pancreas are called the islands of Langerhaus. That's the driver of your pancreas. If you destroy the melanin, you make the person have diabetes. That's what causes diabetes mellitus, the destruction of the melanin centers. All drugs work by destroying melanin, slowing it up, or speeding it up. Slow it down, speed it up, or destroy it. It has to work on the melanin, or it's not a drug at all. The monosodium glutinate, or the salt, again, is dealing with the viscosity of the water and African people send more signals via water than electricity. 
That's what we're not reading in this situation, our body chemistry. We send more information in water in our bodies than electricity or magnetism combined. Water is, has this characteristic. If you were to stick your finger in the Atlantic Ocean and take your finger out, that fingerprint will still be there. That's how they can photograph the Navy has done it in 1960 with that photography. Photograph the Earth and tell you every place you have been and what age you were when you were there because you left your melanin print there. Melanin leaves permanent memory. When you grow, your body lays out a blueprint that tells your nerves and muscles how to grow. And it's laid out in blue. That's why the Europeans, before they make something into a reality, they make a blue print based on the human body. Everything comes from the human body. So your body makes this blueprint, and your nerves and muscles knows how to grow. Therefore, if you cut off a person's leg, they will have a false leg. And they say, my leg hurt. And you know they don't have a leg there. It's because the melanin leaves permanent memory. So if you stick your finger in the Atlantic Ocean, even if a storm and a tide comes, your fingerprint will still be in that water because melanin leaves permanent memory. And if I want to alter your memory, I can alter it from your fingerprint. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I do not have to use you. I can use a witness, as they call it in psychic healing, a witness. That's what a dog uses when he takes a handkerchief from a man who's running away. He uses a witness which carries the same vibration, therefore he can find the man. That's, what the, that's the melanin in the handkerchief. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's the melanin in the handkerchief. So to find you, all I have to do is find your melanin, and I can find you. I just ask you, your melanin, where is it? And to do that, they have machines to do that this day very easily done. Remember, everything is based on your body. You have rhythms that come. Each organ has a rhythm. And if you want to find out how well the organ is, you listen to its rhythm. And we call it the auscultation system. And that's why they have a stethoscope. But the Europeans can only listen to the rhythm of the heart. They can't hear the rest of it. Hell, they can't even dance. So they can't pick up the rhythm. I couldn't see the time, brother. You can tell me. Five yeah, I say five minutes. I, I had that before. Yeah, I'm on color folks time anyway. <laughs> Is that five years? Or, you know? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Hotel. Hotel. First of all, I want to say it's just a pleasure to be here and thank uh, Brother Kevin and Dalbra and uh, Deborah for putting this on. Thank you so much. And I really want to ask two questions, but I'll ask them both and answer whichever oh, yeah. is. Zendaya is from California. We Oakland. have Florida and Oakland California. in the house, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, what, what is a sperm washing? I've heard a lot about this lately, and I have friends that were not able to get pregnant. So they took his sperm and washed it, and then they impregnated her. Mm -hmm. Secondly, there's a lot of talk in, 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 in the health food stores of uh, melatonin or melatonin and what its relationship is and where do they get it from and how do we use it? Mm -hmm. Well, hmm, melatonin comes from serotonin. Serotonin comes from tyrosine. Tyrosine comes from phenylalanine. Phenylalanine is amino acid. That's the amino acid trail. Phenylalanine, tyrosine, serotonin, melatonin. It's all made by uh, your pineal gland and melanin centers elsewhere in your body. You have other places in your body that makes melanin other than your pineal gland. And primarily, um, the serotonin lets you know when you're hungry. You know, when your level of serotonin drops down, you'll want something to eat. And you can't stabilize your serotonin without melatonin, which is made at night, so you have to get proper sleep to get your melatonin to stabilize your serotonin. And then you can't stabilize your melatonin unless you get proper sunlight stimulation to your eyes by looking off direction from the sun. 
in the morning, getting sunlight stimulation in your eyes. You can tell when you're not getting proper stimulation of your pineal gland and your melatonin and serotonin if you start developing white spots on your skin. You're running a serotonin and melatonin deficiency, which you can measure by your blood pressure. If you take it when you're sitting down and then take it when you're standing up and the numbers increase, you have a melanin insufficiency. If you take your blood pressure sitting down and stand up and the numbers decrease, you have a melanin <coughs> insufficiency and deficiency. Well, you just have a shortage of melanin. All I'm trying to say is you take your blood pressure as 120 over 80 while you're sitting, then you stand up as 130 over 90, you have a melanin insufficiency. So you have to be able to gauge how your melanin is going. Of course, all of us have had these melanin tests because we're full of melanin. We go to doctors and they know we're melanin dominant, so they test our melanin. So if they're not doing that, then more than likely they're not helping you too much. What they're doing there is trying to demelanize the sperm, which they call a wash. If they take some of the melanin identity from it it's, or add more melanin to it, it's more susceptible to do things that they want. If you take some of the melanin altered in some way, you can direct the sperm easier. But if it has the melanin, it's going to say, hey, I'm too sick to impregnate somebody. That's what the melanin's going to say. I'm just too sick to do this. And it won't do that. But they have to take away that melanin in some way. So the melanin say, well, hell, it doesn't matter. I'm confused now. <laughs> and it just uh, impregnate anybody. And we call that a wash. But actually, it's alteration of melanin. All drugs and systems of radiation work on melanin. There's nothing else for it to work on. Radiation therapy, chemotherapy, it has to work on the melanin. There's, there's no getting around it. Just like your, yes sir, just like your microwave ovens, which was banned in 1945, invented under Hitler, Nazi Germany. They banned it because it's too dangerous, they said. Invented it as a weapon, accidentally cooked somebody. They say, oh, well, we can use it to cook food. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, brother. Mm -hmm. My question is on um, antioxidants. I think there's a, there's a big thing going on about antioxidants and how you need them. And there are a lot of antioxidants that are coming out. Could you talk, speak on that if it's needed as a supplementary to your diet? And if so, <coughs> what natural forms do you have? Mm -hmm. My second question is on, on the smoking of marijuana. Does that affect you in a negative way or positive ways of healing or not a healing type of thing to do? Okay. Uh, I'm only going to talk five minutes more long, but see, that's his question. So his question's answer may take longer. So don't blame it on me, okay? <laughs> All right. So antioxidant is a theory based on a free radical theory. The antioxidants are vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, and selenium. And they're all based on a theory, which is a political and social statement of a scientist. It has nothing to do with science. It's all social here. So what we're trying to do is increase the ability of the body, of the cells, to carry more oxygen. And they do that with something that's antioxidant, like they have uh, antibiotic. The t term itself says anti-life. So in order to save your life, you take an antibiotic. Right, okay, if you want to save your oxygen, why take an antioxidant? That's because we're dealing with these Europeans. It's wacky. So what we're trying to do is stabilize the oxygen of the cells in some way. And to do that, we have to nourish the cells properly. Fresh fruits and vegetables as much as possible, whole grains as much as possible, deep breathing, in, and water as much as possible. That helps regenerate the cells and helps the cells to carry more oxygen. Once you reduce the oxygen supply of a cell by 60%, it's cancerous by definition. And when we're looking at antioxidants and free radicals, we're looking at the behavior of a cell. If a cell behaves this way, we say it's a mineral. But if it behaves in a vital way, we say it's a vital mineral, which you call a vitamin. All we're looking at is behavior. If it does this, we call it a cell. And if it does that, we call it a bacteria. But if it does this, we call it a parasite. It's just behavior. The, the basic entity is still a cell. If you do this, we call you a student. If you do that, we call you a thief. You're still the same person. We're looking at the same thing. We're just looking at a different behavior. We, when you're looking at behavior, 
you're in the area of social science. That's why I, I told you science is political and social, because you're looking at, the, looking at this thing through the eyes of someone. And to see, you have to have a culture, or else you don't know what you're looking at. And to hear, you have to have a culture, or else you do not know what you're hearing. Without a culture, Chinese would not like Chinese music. You have to have a culture to like music. You have to have a culture. You see through the eyes of your culture, and you see through your mother, because your mother teaches you how to see and how to hear. And if you're not bonded to your mother, you're not bonded to your culture, so it's impossible to, for you to be bonded to yourself. In other words, the breast is not something that brother's supposed to nurse on when they're 30 years old. But in any case, I'm not going to go that way. So what we're looking at now is a chemical. Marijuana as a plant, making a tea is fine. Make a tea out of a drink, it's a good sedative, good for asthma, respiratory kind of things, great. Once you put a match to it, it's a chemical. You to totally different ball game now. You put a match to it, you have made a chemical because you isolated and concentrated an ingredient. The chemicals that melt in marijuana now are just as toxic as tobacco. They cause the same illness that tobacco causes. It's been so hybridized, hormones, pesticides, herbicides. Once you put a match to it, it's a chemical, and it's going to cause you to have problems with your sperm. It causes it to move a little slow, especially the male sperm, which is supposed to move fast. The female sperm moves slower because it has two brains and it's two heads, so it kind of moves slower. The, it slows down the male sperm. But we have been orientated kind of wrong because the female defines whether a person's a boy or a girl. The female sperm, which you call the egg, controls the body from the waist down. Females determine girl or boy. Male just determines character. But when you study European science, you're going to get the whole thing backwards, because the Europeans, they are ass backwards, if they can find that flat ass. But I'm not going to get into that. That's right. That may have been my five minutes. <laughs> I got 30 seconds, go ahead. 30 seconds on nanotechnology. Yeah. I have a three point question, but since I just got one. <laughs> no, 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 man. No, man. Uh, could it be said that uh, processed foods and uh, pharmaceutical drugs are devised to uh, uh, depress the female energy in the male and to uh, increase the male energy so that uh, he wouldn't be able to cross over to the psychic power of this being? Well, processed food is denatured food and it's done, it's a matter of spiritual warfare anyway. That's what we're, science is spirit, spirituality. We just use another language and the whole attack, attack is on spirituality of African people. There is a deliberate attack on the womb of African women. The whole attack is on the womb. It's a spiritual warfare, it has always been that way. We just don't see it that way. But that's how it's started and that's how it's gonna end. Thank you. You're gonna unwind me.